exciting action every week. From the courts, to the range, to the water, and to the fields. U of O Eagle Sports is everywhere and all the time. This is U of O Eagle Sports Weekly with your host, Sports Information Director, and all-around Superman, Josh Pettis. Welcome you to the U of O Sports Weekly Show. I'm your host, Josh Pettis, and I'll be providing you scores, schedules, coaches, interviews, and much, much more right here on the U of O Sports Weekly Show. First, we want to start off by congratulating assistant women's wrestling coach Charlotte Fowler for qualifying for U.S. Olympic trials last weekend in Fort Worth. We'll have more with Coach Gardner about that experience later in the show, but let's start off by going over some scores from the weekend. Thursday, baseball hosted Bellhaven. They took that doubleheader 7-6 and 7-2. Softball was on the road actually at Bellhaven and dropped that game Friday. Baseball team completed the series and won 5-3. Softball got swept in a doubleheader on the road against Bellhaven. And in women's tennis, they hosted Letourneau, dropped that match 7-2. And in men's tennis, they also dropped that match 7-2. Now, women's soccer, they were on the road in the ASC playoffs, took on Harden-Simmons in Abilene, and dropped that match 3-0. Men's soccer hosted the ASC quarterfinals against Mary Harden-Baylor, ended in a 2-2 draw but the Eagles advance by virtue of a 4-3 advantage in the PK shootout to advance to the ASC semifinals hosted by Harden-Simmons. That wraps up Eagle action from over the weekend. weekend. One more thing, a couple weeks ago, the Clay Target team went to San Antonio for the ACUI National Championships and placed sixth overall. I want to congratulate the team and congratulate Keaton Little, who is national runner-up in American Skeet. We'll have head women's and men's wrestling coach Leroy Gardner. He'll talk about coaching and training Coach Fowler at the U.S. Olympic Trials in Fort Worth last weekend, right after this message. back to the UO Sports Weekly Show. Today we're joined by head women's and men's wrestling coach Leroy Gardner. Coach Gardner, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, glad to be here. Always, always uh, love sharing about what's going on with the program and with the broader community, so thank you for having me. Well, let's start off talking about Coach Fowler. Uh, once in a lifetime opportunity, she wrestled in the uh, U.S. Olympic Trials in Fort sure. Worth. You were able to coach and train her. Just talk about that experience for her and for you. Yeah, definitely. Well, we hope it's a uh, at least a second in a lifetime opportunity in the future. Right. <laughs> uh, so we hope it's not once. Um, I think, you know, for, for us, it was uh, exciting um, because, and, and not probably many people know, but, you know, sh she started out as an athlete in our um, club when we were in Houston, Texas as a first year wrestler. So um, at 15 years old was the first time um, Susie and I had, had coached her. And so uh, been around since the beginning. And that was a plan that she had, you know, to achieve and work towards that level since, since that time. And so to have that opportunity and earn that opportunity um, was like a, a good, just a good, you know, culmination of a lot of years of work on, on her part 
you know, we, we contribute uh, where we could and can. Um, and, you know, there's a, she, she spent four years uh, competing with uh, Campbellsville University and um, had a great career there. So uh, just trying to continue to build on that. And so to be able to have that opportunity um, was really exciting and fun. You know, I, ne I never got to go as an athlete. Uh, just the, t the years didn't match up. But um, to go there as a coach and see it in person, um, it's definitely a unique um, experience. And certainly cream of the crop wrestlers at that event, right? Yeah, definitely. I think you could definitely see that this um, folks had been training uh, for, you know, four years for that window, five years with COVID, right? So, um, which is unique. Uh, we had, you had um, athletes who had spent since the last cycle training and uh, you could see that in the level of co competitiveness that, that everyone brought to each match. And, um, you know, there's some retirements that happened on the mat. Uh, some some well-known people in, in uh, you know USA wrestling and in, in, in the Olympic movement for us uh, left their shoes on the mat and retired at the end of their matches. Uh, obviously, those that maybe weren't going on and some you know some young youngsters uh, really showed themselves. And so I think just seeing that level of competition, um, which comes every four years, uh, reinforced how tough it is to make it out of the United States to go put the flag on your back and go compete against the best in the world. We're going to roll some footage of her here in a second at sure. Campbellsville. Sure. Uh, she went, uh, what, in a national tournament all four mm -hmm. years, right? She did. Uh, she, she, she got um, second this last year, but she went 5-3-3-1 um, as, as an athlete. So. Well, let's watch that footage right now here at the NAI National Championships where Coach Fowler wrestled. And uh, we're going to have you talk through this footage okay. uh, so the fans can know <laughs> what's going on. All right. Again, this is Charlotte Fowler. Uh, semi-finals here against an yep. opponent from, I believe, somewhere in Texas. Definitely, yeah. Um, she is from uh, Texas Wesleyan. So you can see, um, you know, Charlotte trying to take that inside tie control there. Um, and she throws that by to attack that, that lower body, attack that leg. Um, this is a position that Charlotte's really good at in this leg lace situation or uh, cross ankle turn. Um, that's worth two points when she exposes the opponent's back. So you can see the takedown and then she transitions right to attacking that, that cross ankle hold. Um, this is probably the most common way or uh, second most common. I think it's probably the most common way that, that in freestyle is scored in, in, on the mat. Um, and so uh, this is an opponent I don't she, think she had faced before. Um, she had moved down a weight class from 53 kilos to 50 kilos, which is 110. Um, so, you know, you can see this young lady shoot, shoot that low level shot. Um, Charlotte's trying to get, get, get off that hold and, and break, uh, break, break her grip to score the takedown there. And again, she ta attacks right to where she's good, which is that leg lace, uh, cross ankle hold. So she goes right there again, trying to score. I think she runs out of t uh, time on this one. Um, no, she gets this one. So, and now she can continue to do this. So that's two points every time. So if she r rolls her one more time, um, which she's going to try and do, but uh, the lock slipped a little bit. Um, and so she goes right back to it because that she just she's really good there So you see she scored that again and actually the point differential there 10 0 is a technical superiority So that match is over now. It's basically like a, a home a home run rule in okay. baseball So that you know, that was a good match for for us um, And I think you know, you, you can see some of the areas that we've worked uh, with Charlotte in that in that video You know her inside tie right to that um that underhook right to that leg attack and then going right into her leg lace um, That's where if she's gonna win she's gonna beat someone probably doing that so that's right. kind of what we've worked on a lot with her so. I, s I saw you out of the corner of my eye you were back in the celebrating yeah. on the bench there. no you're yeah, pretty excited, excited about in that. the corner um you know i th again that 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 weekend at the last chance qualifier you know it's um she had to make the finals um to qualify for the olympic trials which is the goal and so uh to, to once she made it to the finals and then um she lost in the finals to a really talented young lady um and then actually there was someone for third who, who could challenge for true second and, and she defended that. So when we lost that match in the finals, you know, I told her at the end of the day, like you had to win one more to make it to the Olympic trials. Either you win the finals or you win this true second match and defend the, your second spot. And, uh, and she did. She pinned the, pinned the opponent. And so I think, um, you know, bottom line is everybody who showed up at the Olympic trials earned their way there. And I think that's what I was trying to, you know, reinforce and coach Charlotte. I was, hey, um, you got to you got to win one more to, to earn your way here. There's no there's n there's no givens, right? If if you don't if you don't go away winning from this tournament, um, then then you don't get the ticket to the next level. And mm -hmm. that and that's true, you know. At the the Olympic trials, they took her weight class was 15 athletes, uh, down to one, right? It, right. You know, the, the top three is national team, so one, two, and three all matter. But for the sake of the Olympics, really only one matters. And and it's very, you know. I, I think we do it, wrestling is very uh, much like that where you know at, at the end of the, at the end of all of it you know there's gonna be one champ you know it's right. not a 
you know, the team can, can be uh, a combination of all the performance of all the team, but uh, per individual, right? There's only one person standing on the top of the podium, and, and so it's a lot of work to, to get and earn that opportunity to stand there. So. Well, I know you're glad she's on staff with you. Just talk yep. about your women's program a little bit. It's a club sure. sport now, but NCAA's announced that it will be a, what, varsity sport? Yeah, that's, that's, yeah they, they, um, it's an emerging sport after, I think we were included in the group of 40 uh, that they needed to get to that number at the NCAA level. level. So that's really, I'm really great for the leadership that we've demonstrated there. Um, you know, I, I think it's, uh, we're, we're really shooting, I think we're aiming for like 10 athletes in the fall. Um, you know, and, and all, the, all the growing of a program is, you know, one, kind of the, the folks coming in now will set the standard of, you know, what we're expecting from academically and athletic preparation and performance and, you know, just trying to get them to grow and, and, and aspire to the highest levels. And, you know, this, this is something like where we would like to have athletes who, um, should they choose, a athletically um, work and, and say, hey, hey, I, wanna, I would like to be at the uh, world team trials or at that high level, you know, and so it's just really good to be at a, a place where we can we can both meet the goals academically that our student athletes have, and then also we don't have to hold back athletically and say, well, we're, we're just D3, so we can't aspire to the highest level, but, but we, we can, you know? And so that's the fun part is uh, having Charlotte in the room with those young ladies and, and the future of this program building, and you know, it's, a, it's an exciting time. Yeah. You know, it's exciting. I, I love to hear coaches um, tell me what their sport has done for them. So what sure. does wrestling do for a young woman or a young man, you think? Um, I think if anything, you know, there's a, I think, you know, you hear a lot about grit. Yep. Um, it's kind of, you know, I think the last five years been kind of the, the, the term. And I think wrestling is very personal uh, when you prepare. And if you've done everything you can to, to prepare to perform, um, there's no, you know, there's no, nobody else who can drop a ball or nobody else who can miss a block or a tackle or whatever, the, you know, miss a pass in, in soccer or something like that. It's just you. And I think that is unique in our sport. So um, you kind of learn through those lessons in wrestling uh, that ultimately it, you've got to do the work to prepare. Um, and that includes in life, you know, everything, every hard thing, you know, I've ever done, I, I, I leaned back to, um, and I use example, you know, after, you know, winning a title, um, going into the work world, um, I approached everything like, hey, what's the next kind of title I'm going after, right? What's the next achievement? And, you know, even looking at getting my grad degree, I remember um, saying, well, I've done hard things, sitting in a statistics class and having it look like, uh, you know, Japanese on the board to me. I said, well, <laughs> I've done hard things so I can do this hard thing. And I think right. uh, that's a lot. It gives you just personal accountability, um, perseverance. Um, it, it helps you if you don't learn to enjoy that process of working, um, then wrestling's, you know, not very fun. <laughs> right. So you got to learn to enjoy that preparation process and that work. And so that those those skills and that exp those experiences carried through with the rest of your life. I, you know, I tell our athletes all the time, you know, my trophy that's, you know, 80 years old now on the on the on the shelf is just wood and metal. Right. But I've got all the time and effort and, and, and learning about myself as a competitor, and as a human um, that I that I bring to bear to every experience after that, right? And so I think that's the powerful part about wrestling. And, and you get that through all sports, but I think wrestling's unique in that it's just me and you out there and um, there's nowhere to hide when you win. Mm -hmm. Everyone sees it. When you lose, everyone can see that. And there's nowhere to hide. Um, and I think that's a, it's a very uh, humbling experience when you lose. And it's, uh, it's very gratifying when it goes your way. And, you know, there's a little bit of luck involved too. So, but at, but it's, it, if you don't prepare as well you, as best you can, then that luck often is not existent for you. Coach, you talked about being on the mat. You're kind of on an island by yourself. Yep. Um, and you wrestle at a high level collegiately and sure. internationally. Yep. Talk about the mental aspect of wrestling. Um, I think, you know, it's a lot of it because you are out there. Um, I think once you get to the, those highest levels and the times when I was able to perform at my highest and is, is um, at the, once you, you're everyone's strong, everyone's fast, everyone's tech has their technique that they're good at and skilled. Um, then it starts just becoming, you know, what you what you feed the machine between your ears. And, and, and I always tell tell everybody feed the computer, right? Feed the computer the good stuff. And I think that's it's that self-belief at the end. Of, at the end of all of it, you have to go out there knowing you've done everything you can and you're as prepared as possible. And I think that comes with the self-belief that you can actually uh, achieve and, and earn whatever it is you're going after. And I think um, that, that, that's what it comes down to at, at those levels. And you saw it this weekend, um, you know, in those matches, 
uh, with, with some of those athletes at the highest level trying to make it to Olympics. Um, you could just see who believed, you know, uh, and um, it's every, every one of them is great, phenomenal competitors. But I think you could just see in the exchanges or maybe there's an official makes a, a questionable call or, you know, something didn't go how they thought it would. And you can just see who who battles back from that, who rebounds and and performs. Uh, you know, one example um, from this weekend, I think the um, Kayla Miracle, who was actually a teammate of Charlotte's. Um, and I think she's at um, in one of the middleweights. But um, or I'm sorry, um, Helen Maruis was a returning uh, Olympic champ, and uh, she she had a, a split the first series of the match, and the f the one that she lost it was not really that close, and so here we have a returning Olympic champion who, um, you know, is is having to go through the the full three matches to win the series, and she came out there and um, you know just looked like the Olympic champ that we knew from the previous cycle, and didn't look like that in that middle match, and I think you could just see the the switch change. And I think that's the difference is you, the ones, the people that perform at the best most consistently just are able to make that switch mentally to uh, assert their position in the match, uh, you know, overcome a bad call or whatever it is. They just, they just that consistent belief in, in their self and their performance and their preparation. So uh, with this season, uh, you know, COVID affected everybody, but you were on your men's team, you were able to at least get one match in, you hosted yep. the match. You know, go over that match. Uh, what did you get out of it, and what did the guys get out of it, and who stood out to you? Um, well, you know, I think for us it was uh, really, I was really just grateful <laughs> to sit in the corner again. Um, you know, we were really grateful that uh, to put on a singlet and have a ref with a whistle and go after someone who didn't wear purple. Right. Um, and I think even though we wrestled <laughs> OBU, who I think they have, you know, some yeah, purple. Yeah, they are purple. But, but that's, that, metaphorically speaking, um, you know, and, um, you know, Effort-wise, I think if you look at that, like I saw our entire team just wrestle on heart, right? I, we had been uh, preparing kind of, um, we knew they were going to cancel the, the championship. So our preparation had changed a little bit because we thought that uh, we didn't know if we were going to be able to compete. So we just focused on, you know, getting stronger, getting more skilled and, and school and not really being, um, having the opportunity to compete a bunch. Our competition shape wasn't there. And I think, uh, you know, we, we knew that. And I think we saw that in some of our athletes, like they're used to having a bigger gas tank than they had at that, in those matches. And uh, so it was a little bit tough to know that they're counting on that gas tank because they usually have it and it's not there right now. But that's where the heart part kicked in and they just battled on pure, like I just don't like losing and I'm going to do everything I can to win. And um, you, could, you could see that OBU had um, competed a whole season and had just got done with their regional. And so for me, it was telling for us as far as, um, you know, our guys still put the foot on the line and battled with everything they had. Um, would I have liked to have six, five, six matches before that to prepare and, and win, the, win that if it was a team environment? Um, I would have liked to, but um, we were grateful for what we got. And I think, you know, if I look at far as, um, gosh, now I'm digging back. It was a long day, but uh, I was proud of the whole team. Uh, to step, we tried to get everyone matches. Everyone gave a hundred percent, and I think you know um, we saw some young young guys. Um, you know, I think Cody Price was one who stepped up pretty good uh, and, and won his second match in a, in a pretty phenomenal way, pinning this guy. Um, but but overall, just proud of the the guys. And and really, I think we have some of our guys who we know are returners. You know, returning varsity guys or uh, uh, guys who've been at regionals, um, and so we know kind of what we're counting on from them. But it's always a question of what the freshmen and the underclass are going to bring when it's their first time competing. So I was really happy to see the underclassmen, um, you know, step up to the plate and uh, give their best and, and compete hard. And I think our, our, our upperclassmen did represent themselves well, too, and just competed hard and, and, and represented Ozarks well. So, um, you know, we were proud of, proud of just proud of the, their effort and we were happy to have the chance to go like the, it just boiled down. I was glad to be in the corner again, yeah. walk, walking up and down the sidelines, yelling my head off. So uh, we, we, we were grateful for that. Sure. You guys have seen some, some success at the national level. Sure. You had uh, four qualified, Devon, Jarrett and Nathan twice. Yep. Nathan was there, didn't get to wrestle last year, yep. unfortunately. But um, what does it take for a wrestler to get to that level? You know, we, we have a, I have a saying uh, to, to the, for the team all the time. It's, you know, it's everything you got all, every time, all the time. And it, it, it really, um, it, it takes to, to get on that podium, um, to be an All-American, to be a national champ, because there's, you know, there's only one person on that day at, at nationals, let alone get in there, um, who is like, yep, I came here planning to get first and I got first. 
everyone else is the second place guy is saying, well, if I had done these things, if I, maybe I get first. If the third place saying, maybe if I had done better, I've been in the finals. And, you know, all the way down that podium. And so I tell the, you know, our student athletes, this is going to take everything you have. And uh, there's, you know, you got to be skilled, you got to be strong, you got to be in shape, and there's a little bit of luck. And so we can control those first three, right? And so I think it, you know, it, it takes everything they're, they're, they have to give. And I think in college, you know, one of the things that I, we talk in our program a lot about is just, you know, getting good sleep and recovering and eating right. Because when you're 18 to 21, sometimes, you know, you're a little bit bulletproof, right? You can work on a little more, little less sleep than I can at, you know, 40 years old. And uh, you could probably fuel yourself with a little less optimal fuel and still be fine with, you know, than, than I can, but at 40. But I think um, if you look at the best, getting the best out of your performance, it's going to take all those small things. And it's kind of goes back to, you know, what we talked about. It's not much different than what I talked about with the Olympic athletes is, you know, everyone who is on that podium is, is skilled, strong, in good shape, um, and, and as healthy as they can be potentially. And to, to do that, it's going to take everything that you have. And I think there's no way to over explain what that, cause th what that means. And that could be different for every person. You know, if, if someone has a, you know, maybe their cardio is not in as good shape and historically, then that means that's what you're going to have to work on, right? If you're, a f if you're afraid of a technical position, man, I really don't like when I start on the bottom and, and an athlete, you know, does this hold on me, then you're going to have to learn how to navigate that hold. Because whatever it is, your weakness, your hole will be exposed at regionals and at nationals. And that's what, you know, so you really, you can't have any holes. And I think that, that takes more work than we realize to, mm -hmm. to not have those holes. And I think that's, um, it's, it's, uh, it's always a, sometimes when guys say, hey, I want to be a national champ, I said, I don't know if you know what that means yet, but that's our job to tell you, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's saying that you want to do that, is, there's a lot behind that. And so, um, you know, we've got guys who have committed to that, and um, we're excited about next season um, to, to be able to have them find out what happens for their commitment. And I think this, this time of year we've talked to the, the guys about, hey, there's 100, I think at the time it was 162 days before uh, October 10th. And mm -hmm. I said, you know, I can't mandate your practice between those days because of obviously our rules. But how many days are you going to make those training days and getting better between now and October? Because if you if you wait till October to start, you've already you're already behind the ball. And so, you know, it's a year round thing um, to be the best. And that doesn't mean, that, you know, the beautiful part about Division three is that uh, not everyone, um, you know, not everyone has to pick up that mantle to be successful here. Right, you can still experience a lot of great success without ever being on the podium at NCAA's. Right, and I think that's the cool part about Division Three models. You know, I'm st we're still got people that can be doctors, dentists, lawyers, and giving 100 percent to that. Um, but for those that want to reach top of the podium athletically, um, you know, it's, it's it's no different than trying to go be a lawyer. You know, mm -hmm. in academics, right? It's going to take everything you got. Mm -hmm. There's no easy path to any of those goals. So um, I just like supporting our student athletes and going achieving those things. When you're out recruiting student athletes, uh, what kind of traits or attributes do you look for in a student athlete for Ozark? Um, you know, I think for us, uh, if, if I just, you know, if we're just t talking about, uh, I'm going to assume academics part, is they have that handled, right? Obviously, they got to be doing the right things school academic wise. Um, they got to be staying out of trouble um, in the personal life. And, uh, you know, the other piece for me with athletics, they, it's really simple. They just got to want, they got to want to prove more in wrestling. They got to want to keep showing up and not be done with wrestling, you know? And I think that's the, to, to do well in college, you got to want to keep walking through the doors every day um, because there's going to be hard days. There's going to be days where you don't feel like getting up at six to go run or lift or whatever it is. Or, um, and I think the keys to the most successful people I've seen is they, they keep walking through that door uh, regardless of the circumstances, um, you know, or, or some of it might be, you know, going to see Chad and, and, and if you had a shoulder injury in high school, making sure that you're keeping on top of that rehab. Um, so all those things matter. And that, like I said, everything matters. There's no small thing, right? At school, body ma maintenance, nutrition, sleep, hydration, all those things matter. And so I think that's where for us, it's, uh, I look for those athletes that are like, coach, the bottom line is I, I'm just not ready to be done with wrestling. Like I still have a chip on my shoulder or something to prove. And I think that, go that goes a long way. You know, when someone has something to prove, now they'll, they'll keep chasing it, you yeah. know. Uh, tell the average fan, so wrestling at college is two-semester sport. Correct. Uh, it is absolutely a grind. Just kind of walk us through 
you know, a day in the life of a college wrestler. Yeah, I think that's probably the biggest shock when folks come from high school to college is the length of the season. Um, you know, we'll, we'll start preseason uh, running and lifting in September uh, and be on the mat practicing in October and compete right November first weekend. Um, and I think, you know, for the, you know, sometimes for the staff and faculty too, it's um, the, the component to our sport that's different than any other sport is there's also, we have weight classifications, right? So um, our student athletes are working out sometimes out, they're, they're definitely working out outside of our scheduled practice times to maintain their weight, you know, and I look at, you know, Nathan and, and Jalen and some of those guys, you know, they're usually getting in one other workout throughout the day um, that, that a, 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 you know, someone else potentially in a different sport, a cross country runner may not be getting in um, just to w manage their weight and their body composition. Um, so that, that's a wrinkle. I think, you know, for us, it's more trying to read the, read the student athletes when we see them all day in and day out, start knowing when we see their, uh, you know, kind of their body language and nonverbals or verbal sometimes <laughs> dip in and we got to, or their body, we see the performance change trying to modulate that throughout the season because we won't end till March. You know, the guys who make it to the national uh -huh. tournament, that's a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the, the, the dark spot, kind of we call it the, you know, it goes into a dark tunnel there about January um, because you've made it through one set of finals. Um, you don't get to go home for winter break really much. Uh, you probably get home five, seven days. Uh, you can't really eat as extravagantly as you want over Christmas break. Um, you don't get a New Year's really because we're going to go compete. Um, so that it's like a dark hallway in that January time frame, um, and we we try and manage it and make it fun. We play a lot, you know, maybe more games, um, some handball and stuff. I think you've been in the room yeah. sometimes where the guys yeah. are throwing around the handball and um, you know try to manage it and, and, and really focus on um, uh, managing the intensity and frequency and duration. Right, those are the three components that we play with. And so when it when it at the deepest part of the season where it's the toughest as we're getting ready that month before regionals, um, you know, the intensity and duration are the things we adjust to help help the the mental space for the guys and, and the physical space a little bit but you know we always have the saying that no one's healthy um come ncaa tournament everyone's got something right just our sport is so physical um everyone's you know wrist shoulder elbow knee ankle something hurts right mm -hmm. um nobody feels 100 percent. so it's just to be, be able to still compete and go um even when stuff's not perfect you know yeah. and i think uh, that's really what we try and we try and mitigate those things to the best we can um, and, and just make sure that they're still uh, loving it and having fun even in the hardest part of the season you yeah. know and that's you know just it's a lot of like fine-tuning a radio I think I'd probably date myself with that analogy <laughs> but you know spinning the radio dials you got the big tuner and the small tuner but trying to make sure that signal is right uh, for each each individual and it's different for different guys you yeah. know there's 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 student athletes where you're like hey uh, maybe you need to take take a workout off, and then there's an athletes. Well, maybe you need to get an extra one, but it needs to be shorter, mm -hmm. and it's different different folk strokes for different folks there. Yeah, that's great insight, Coach. Uh, let's talk about your life away from wrestling, uh, your family. <laughs> What's every that? every <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every good coach needs good uh, home support. You sure, a uh, great wife who actually works on campus. Yep. Your son is uh, what a freshman or a sophomore in high it's school? A junior. A junior. junior. Yeah, okay. he's he's gonna be graduating next year. Okay. Um, uh, what what do you guys like to do away from? wrestling and you know. <laughs> um i think you know we're, i'm as as don't tell anyone i think <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit of a homebody um you know and and we really we're kind of foodies uh the the physique probably gives <laughs> it away uh, i enjoy eating uh, i enjoy eating good food so wherever we travel we, we we like to get find um you know food places that that we enjoy and i think amari our son has that you know, he likes that too, so it's kind of cool when we get to go places because every there's no like, oh, I just want a burger or pizza. Everyone's into whatever we go and get. Um, but uh, really, I mean, I'm grateful. I think I've, you know, as you know, I've traveled quite a bit in my mm -hmm. adult life uh, with the military and otherwise. And so for me, um, I'm really always just grateful to be home. And Amari and Susie just laugh, you know, when I, because I'm always like, I'm so glad to be home. And they're like, you're always glad. And I said, yeah, I am. It's, it's just the nature, nature of the beast. Um, but I think we, we like, uh, we really enjoy that. We like, uh, we'll go up to, you know, since we've been in Arkansas, we'll go up to uh, Bentonville and Fayetteville and then down to Little Rock. We've done that. Uh, I think we still have hot springs on our to-do list. Right. Um, you know, we're not really big outdoors, like fisher hunter type people, but uh, I can appreciate, uh, we've been up to Mount Magazine before. Um, so I think for us, it's it, a lot of it revolves around, um, my son and I will watch some, uh, you know, anime and comic, you know, comic book stuff because uh, he's, we, we found a mutual appreciation of that stuff. And uh, he, I think we've just recently watched Attack on Titan, the second, the four, is it the fourth season? So we're making our way through that. So, um, yeah, that's, 
you know, that we've got a great support system. I, I'm lucky uh, that that we have uh, Susie uh, to support us and our team and myself. And then and she understands it. Right. Mm -hmm. I haven't been an athlete. So that's really helpful. Um, she's a really great resource uh, for the for the students uh, because she understands what it's like, but also she's a different voice than me and, and Vinny and Charlotte. Um, she helped a lot. She helps a lot with the with the the, the female athletes because mm -hmm. um, their weight management is different. You know, um, their body composition is different than than the, than the guys, and you know they can't just lose ten pounds and sweating in a workout um, where where you know they, they're a little bit different there. So that that's been really helpful. Um, but yeah, I'm really grateful, uh, eternally grateful uh, to have uh, you know such a such a good support system for such a long time now. You know, yeah. in November I think we've been married twenty years, um, and Amari is on his way to graduating and. Uh, we'll see, you know, ho hopefully in five years we revisit this conversation and he's a exceptionally uh, successful young adult. So, um, well, yeah, we're grateful. I'm grateful. Yeah, you guys are all real talented people. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> I saw Amari, by the way, on the sidelines against OBU. He's doing a little coaching. Yeah, so that, I don't know if that's in his future. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But it cracks me up. He's been around it enough. He knows what he's looking at. Um, you know, he, he it, I always just chuckle when I see him because he knows what he's saying. He'll do it mm -hmm. on his high school matches, too. And. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I mean, that's up if he wants to. Great. Um, coaching life's a unique life. Um, yeah. Nobody does it to get rich. Um, and so, you know, I think I just, you know, if that's what he chooses, then go do the best at it. Right. And yeah. I guess being on the sidelines since he was so young, probably he's, he's not he's as prepared as anyone could be uh, to, to go do that. And he's seen, you know, all the ins and outs for all the years. So, yeah. Great stuff, coach. Thanks for Appreciate joining it. us. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you for all the support. And uh, we thank you to the fans for coming out when we uh when we come out and please continue to do so we, we love it when it's uh packed and we're hopefully uh grateful we continue to just put on a good show when you do come out and make it worth your time thanks again we'll have more of the show right after this i know sports is important but having the academic part along with it is a big plus i've discovered in myself you know a, a newfound ability to overcome adversity at all different angles at a Division three school, school is really shaped around you developing yourself as a complete individual. The end result, in my mind, is you just become a very well-rounded person. Before I came into college, I didn't really think I'd be able to balance so much. It helps a lot that you have a family with your team that can guide you. With a D3 school, there's a lot of time for other opportunities. The coaches expect a lot of you during soccer, but after soccer, that's your own personal time to really find out who you are and other opportunities that you can pursue. By balancing all of my interests, basketball, my leadership skills, and academics, I'm able to better prioritize my life and to manage it. And we welcome you back to the U of O Sports Weekly Show. Let's take a look at Eagle Athletics this week. Thursday, men's soccer is on the road there in the ASC playoffs, the semifinals. They take on Hardin-Simmons in Abilene. Friday, baseball's on the road. They go to Letourneau for a doubleheader there. Women's and men's tennis take on East Texas Baptist. They're hosting East Texas Baptist. That's also senior day this Friday. Saturday, baseball wraps up their series against Letourneau. And softball's actually on the, uh, will be hosting Letourneau as well. Men's and women's track, they will be going to Little Rock for the Little Rock Open this Saturday. And we also hope to see the men's soccer team Saturday in the ASC Finals. Thank you for joining us. And we want to thank the Media 2 class again for producing the show. We'll see you next week.
go, let's go. We gotta finish today's job, boys. 